Hi there, Bob here from Insidium, Top Tip Tuesday time. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can take this particle sim that uses particle collisions and how we can fake the rotating and rolling of these objects using the XP spin modifier and a bit of data mapping. So let's get started. In our scene, we have this dynamic particle sim set up and it is our constraints with collisions, which are giving us this nice interaction. And we've got some smaller particles being blasted into this cube and it's giving us this very nice motion. And in spherical mode, if we're rendering spheres or you're doing bubbles or anything spherical, this is fine. The problem here is that um, if we start rendering something that isn't spherical or we have textures mapped to those spheres in the material, we're not going to have any nice rotations or spinning. So just to demonstrate that, if we go to both of our emitters here, let's go to the display tab and choose a display mode that isn't spherical. Let's just put this on, say, boxes filled and we hit play. You'll see that we're getting the same um, simulation. Obviously, there's a bit of intersecting on the corners here because the collisions are spherical, but there's no spinning or rotations going on here. So what we're able to do is if we want to just do it with particles, which gives us the speed, that's why you'd pick doing it in the particle way. But we wanted to fake some um, kind of interaction and spinning and rolling of our particles. Um, there is a way to do it. So let's just go first of all to both of our emitters and we're going to go to the extended data tab and we need to activate use rotation. And then what we're going to do is add some random rotation. Now, this just adds random rotation when the particles are born. So they'll all be orientated differently, but they don't spin. But now at least it looks less uniform. So that's looking a lot better. But what we're not getting is kind of rolling and um, spinning when they are kind of moving around the place. They're all just keeping that random rotation value that they got at birth. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use the spin modifier. Before I go into that, let's just have another little delve. Look, if we go to our extended data tab where we've just um, activated that use rotation, there we do have simple spin options. So look, if we activate simple spin, and look, we've got a spin amount of one degree with a variation of one degree on each axis. That means that we're going to get some spinning, which is going to fake a bit of kind of rolling um, uh, animation. The problem with this is that they just spin for that same amount for the entire scene. No matter what they're doing, they're spinning the same amount each particle. And so obviously it quickly starts to look a little unrealistic. If we look, let's increase this amount just to make it more obvious. We'll put five on each and you're going to get this spinning effect. But when they should be static, the particles are just spinning and spinning and spinning. So obviously that's not going to work for us. What we need to be able to do is say when the particles are moving quite quickly, they get a bit of random spin. But when they're pretty much static or virtually stationary, the spinning should stop because obviously they won't be rolling at that point. And we can't we haven't got that control inside the emitter. So let's switch that off. Instead, we're going to use one of the X particles modifiers. So I'm going to go to Insidium, X particles, modifiers, motion and bring in an uh, XP spin modifier. Here it is. And in the object tab, what I'm going to do is leave everything to fault. We're going to go to randomize spin. This is what we're going to use. We want it to be unidirectional. So they'll spin on the plus and the minus. And then let's put a spin value of say five degrees in each. Now, again, this is going to be very similar to what we've just done in the emitter. The particles have a random spin value and they just keep spinning all of the time. But what we're going to do now is data map these values so that when the particles are moving quickly, they get five degrees random spin. But when they're static, they don't get any spin. So let's get that sorted. We go to the mapping tab. We're going to add a map. And the parameter we want to map is that random spin value. So let's click on that. We're going to map it not to the age, but to the speed of the particle. And what we want to do is say at 
anything up to five centimeters they should have no spinning and then once they got up to 15 they're getting full spinning okay so let's have a look when the particles are virtually static they should stop spinning yeah and it's only when they get moved that they start to roll and spin again with those random amounts we could even i think we could increase this up to maybe eight so they have a little bit more of a a period where there isn't any spinning to make sure yeah so this obviously is just a fake but in many scenes this will be enough um, to give the illusion of that being a true dynamic object um, and if we then look let's go to our redshift render view and you'll see that we've got these redshift tags and our emitters and in those tags we've got some custom geometry our skulls from a previous top tip so now because we have that fake spinning if we hit render you'll see that we have got our skulls in our shot and as they animate and move around we're going to get some really nice rotations in those skulls so it's again it's going to give that illusion of being a um a full dynamic simulation even though we are just uh, faking it now we'll explore how to do a full rigid body proper simulation using this setup in a different video but for many scenes you are able to fake it using just particles and the advantage of that is way quicker to simulate and you've got more control um, uh, over the particles as well